Hello and welcome back. In this Black Excellence presentation, we will highlight 10 Black women trailblazers. Welcome to BlackExcellence.com, the site where we share Black excellence, opulence, and affluence. Our mission is to inspire you as we enlighten you. We here at Black Excellence specialize in illuminating the experience and contributions of African Americans, which is the foundation of our channel. It is also essential for the Black community, as well as white America, to understand the impact of Black women pioneers, entrepreneurs, and inventors from our past. These women are rarely given the credit that they deserve in terms of their accomplishments in the face of incredible resilience, perseverance, and discrimination. These women didn't have to be given seats at the table. They built and brought their own. Our aspiring grade school student will not read much about these women in the history books, so we hope you take the time to celebrate these trailblazers who may inspire them and help propel their dreams forward. In this original Black Excellence video, we will be featuring 10 African American women who were the first in their field. They excelled in fields that were not only off limits to African Americans, but even more restricted to African American women. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, Phyllis Wheatley. Phyllis Wheatley was the first African-American poet to publish a book. Born in 1753, she was brought to New England from West Africa as a slave when she was nearly eight years old. The Wheatley family purchased and named the young girl, and after discovering her passion for writing, they caught her writing with chalk on the wall, tutored her in reading and writing. She studied English literature, Latin, Greek, and the Bible. With the family's help, Phyllis Wheatley traveled to London in 1773 and published her first poems. Soon after, when she returned to America, she was granted her freedom. Number two, Mary Jane Patterson. Mary Jane Patterson was 16 years old when her family, among others, moved to Ohio in hopes of sending their children to college. The daughter of a master mason, Patterson became the first black woman to graduate from an established American college, Oberlin College. Three years after completing her studies in 1862, Patterson was appointed a teacher assistant in the female department of the Institute of Colored Youth in Philadelphia, according to the African American Registry. She later taught at the Preparatory High School for Colored Youth, renamed Dunbar High School, serving as the school's first black principal from 1871 to 1874. Number three, Mary Eliza Mahoney. Mary Eliza Mahoney, born in 1845, had been a cook, a janitor, and a washerwoman before she began working at the New England Hospital for Women and Children, according to Jacksonville University. When she was 33, she entered the hospital's 16-month nursing program and earned her certification. In a 40-year career, Mahoney directed the Howard Orphan Asylum in Long Island, New York, and was a founding member of the group that became the American Nurses Association. After retirement, Mahoney continued to fight for minority rights, and in 1920 became one of the first women to register to vote in Boston. Number 4. Maggie Lena Walker Maggie Lena Walker, the daughter of a former slave, went to public schools in Richmond, Virginia, became a teacher, and established a newspaper before founding the St. Luke Penny Savings Bank in 1903, according to the National Park Service. In chartering the bank and serving as its first president, Walker broke gender and racial barriers. She later served as board chairwoman when the bank merged with two other Richmond banks, the Park Service reports. The resulting entity until 2009 was recognized as the nation's oldest continually African-American operated bank. Number five, Claudette Cloven. Claudette Cloven broke ground nearly 10 months before Rosa Parks. In March 1955, Cloven, then just 15 years old, was arrested for violating an ordinance in Montgomery, Alabama that required segregation on city buses, according to a Stanford University entry. Cloven went to jail without a chance to call her family, a University of Idaho researcher wrote. Cloven and other women challenged the law in court, 
but Black civil rights leaders pointing to circumstances in Cloven's personal life thought Parks would make a better icon for the movement. Being dragged off that bus was worth it just to see Barack Obama become president, Cloven said in the 2017 book, Still I Rise. So many others gave their lives and didn't get to see it, and I thank God for letting me see it. Number six, Alice Dunnigan. Alice Dunnigan was mostly ignored during White House news conferences until John F. Kennedy became president. That's when Jet Magazine in 1961 ran the headline, Kennedy in Negro Reporter Gets First Answer in Two Years. According to the Pointer Institute, a journalism school and think tank, Dunnigan, born in 1906 in rural Kentucky, was the daughter of a tenant farmer and a laundress. She began pinning columns at just 13 years old. She graduated from Kentucky State University and taught for 18 years before moving to Washington. In 1947, she became chief of the Associated Negro Press and the first African-American woman accredited to cover the White House, according to the Kentucky Commission on Women Foundation. Number seven, Alice Coachman. Alice Coachman changed that by soaring an unprecedented five feet, six and one eighth inches in the high jump at the London Games. She also jumped into the history books as the first black woman to win an Olympic gold medal. The Albany State Georgia College student surpassed the Olympic record of five feet, four and three fourths inches held jointly by Americans Jean Shiley and Babe Digrickson since the 1932 Olympics. Close to 82,000 spectators watched Coachman's August 7, 1948 victory that came in dramatic fashion as she competed against Dorothy Tyler of Great Britain. Both women jumped the same height, but the American was given the nod because Tyler had several misses at lower heights. Number eight, Ruby Bridges. Ruby Bridges became a civil rights activist when she was only six years old. Although the Supreme Court ruled against segregation in public schools in the Brown v. Board of Education decision, many all-white schools in the South were still not completely on board with welcoming black students. Bridges passed the entrance exam to attend an all-white elementary school, William France Elementary School, in her New Orleans neighborhood. And in 1960, she became the first African-American child to desegregate the all-white elementary school in the South. Federal marshals escorted Bridges and her mother past angry protesters each day. Bridges wrote two books about her experiences and received the Carter G. Woodson Book Award. Number nine, Mae Jemison. Mae Jemison began studying at Stanford University when she was just 16 years old. She earned a degree in chemical engineering and in 1981, a doctorate in medicine from Cornell University. Jemison was chosen for NASA's astronaut program in 1987 and became the first black woman to travel in space in 1992 after launching with the Space Shuttle Endeavor crew. Afraid of heights, she nevertheless logged 190 hours, 30 minutes, 23 seconds in space, NASA said. Number 10, Vernice Armour. Known simply as Fly Girl, Vernice Fly Girl Armour went from beat cop to combat pilot in three years. Within months of earning her wings, she found herself flying over the deserts of Iraq, supporting the men and women on the ground. After serving two tours overseas, she had become America's first African-American female combat pilot. After returning home, she realized that many people wanted to create breakthroughs in their own lives. They just didn't know how. From her experiences, she created a seven-step process called the Zero to Breakthrough TM Success Plan. She now travels extensively, sharing this message through her keynotes, coaching, and seminars. She is your battle-tested speaker and ignites audiences with a dynamic spark that can't be extinguished. Lead your team through the execution of any plan by harnessing the power of a breakthrough mentality. From the moment she leaps into the audience, she shows attendees how to go from zero to breakthrough and create a personal flight plan utilizing her candid strategies to win on the battlefield of business and life. We appreciate the fact that you stayed with us until the end. Thank you for spending time with us and don't forget to like this video. Also, make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a video. Bye for now. We will see you tomorrow.